in this world, cash is king. In this world, cash is king. Capitalism has an iron clamp over the world in the 21st century, where priorities are placed on profits over the welfare of people. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. And I love all people, rich or poor, but in those particular positions, I just don't want a poor person. Does that make sense? There's a monopoly created by massive corporations over the products we love and use every day who don't treat their workers well. Amazon employee says Amazon's work demands are ruining her life. My next guest says Microsoft's troubles go beyond its leader, Steve Ballmer. He says morale is terrible. And the At all. It seems impossible for smaller companies to beat this. From a study in 2023, around 50% of new businesses cease trading within the first three years of being open leaving us with no other options. So can we even change this? Are we too far gone? Well, maybe we are, but people are trying to make a change. Cooperatives are organizations controlled by their members. These organizations strive to meet everyone's best interests. They put the welfare of their members on the same pedestal of importance as the profits of the company. This change is needed now more than ever, with job satisfaction levels dropping year on year since 2019 by 6% a year. In 2023, it actually dropped at a rate 10 times faster than in past years. So, how can you, an honours student, benefit from cooperatives in any way? Sluggish, lazy, partying all night, antisocial. These are just a few key words I've been stereotyped as a student. There seems to be this negative stereotype around those who go to university. Don't hire Gen Z. They don't know what work actually means. John's a professor and he says his Gen Z students are lazy, less motivated, only interested in themselves and need to socialize more. Take a look at your boardroom meeting. Are there any under 25 year olds present? And are they listened to? If not, why not? Most students are below 25, so a good start would be looking into how cooperatives affect young people. And thanks to the study Offering Hope to Our Future Generations by Cooperatives UK, we can see all the positive effects cooperatives have on younger generations. A huge issue young people face is mental health problems. A YouGov survey of 16 to 25 year olds found that nearly two thirds of young people have experienced mental health problems or know someone who has. And while there is therapy and mental health support being provided to young people, these are tackling symptoms of mental health problems and not the root causes, like a lack of affordable housing and poor job security. One of the main causes though is the feeling of isolation young people face due to a multitude of reasons. A main one being COVID to be fair, but social media doesn't help the feeling of loneliness. This is where cooperatives come in. I think, yeah, co-ops are really, really great for young people, especially kind of in the more precarious times that we live in. I think young people have it very hard at the moment. As young people are faced with increasingly precarious conditions, as well as a culture which kind of emphasizes social, like individual responsibility, co-ops kind of counter these trends by emphasizing community rather than individual responsibility. Cooperatives give a feeling of community and have a strong focus on the social aspect of work. The ability for young people to contribute in collaborative decision making can boost their self-esteem to new heights. The support from peers in cooperatives also creates a warm work environment, igniting young people to better themselves. As I mentioned before, Poor job security plays into the stresses young people face today. With two thirds of 16 to 25 year olds believing there are not enough good jobs on the market for young people today. Though in cooperatives, job security is not seen as an issue, as they are far more resilient with a survival rate of two times higher. The reason for this resilience is due to the goal of cooperatives being to fulfill their members' needs. It means that members are invested in the long term, keeping cooperatives afloat. There has also become a gig economy where workers have become independent contractors or freelancers, meaning there are a lack of long-term stable jobs on the market. With the gig economy, this means that a lot of people get zero hour contracts, 
which means there is no agreement for the minimum amount of working hours that an employee gets. While the benefit of these zero hour contracts is flexibility, it also gives the employer an excuse to cut down your working hours or give you none at all. Zero hour contracts can also be seen in platform cooperatives, but due to their goals being of the best balanced social and economic outcome, these contracts are less about exploitation and more about giving the employee a choice. Cooperatives are keen to inspire younger generations about the ways of cooperation. It is even in the fifth cooperative principle, published by the ICA, which states, Cooperatives provide education and training for their members, elected representatives, managers and employees, so they can contribute effectively to the development of their cooperative, they inform the general public, particularly young people and opinion leaders, about the nature and benefits of cooperation. Now, despite everything I've listed so far being directed at young people, most of the benefits apply to all ages. And no matter who you are, there's always a cooperative out there for you. To gain the essential team working skills and job stability those coming straight out of an honours degree often don't have, maybe turning to a cooperative wouldn't be your worst idea.